Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up some trigger boxes in Unreal and get them so that they play some wise events. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how to set up some tags as well in Unreal Engine. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Wise. Um, I've already got some sounds imported already. Um, and I'm just going to put these in a random container. So I'm just going to go under Actor Mixer Hierarchy, New Child, and Random Container. I'm going to call this Tree Russell. Okay, and then I'm just going to drag this stuff in just like that. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to test it out here. I think I'm going to bring it up a little bit in volume. Perfect. And uh, you can add some reverb and stuff like that to it. Um, I guess I'll just quickly do that. If you have to, you have to sort of create a, um, an auxiliary bus in order to do that. But if you're looking to know how to do this sort of stuff, um, I have a previous video that I did about sort of ambient sounds and adding all the reverb stuff. So just make sure you check that out too as well. Um, but anyways, in here, I'm just gonna select the biodome. This is for the level that I have. And I can adjust the send value right over here. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, and that is pretty much it for the tree rustle. Um, I'm gonna add one more sound here too as well. And so in order to import stuff, you're just gonna hit Shift and I, and you can sort of just hit Add Files. Now for me, it's just gonna be just this sound. It's gonna be called the Hazard Drop Off. It's just to show you the example of a trigger box. Okay, so now that I've got the sounds in here, that's the sound for that. Uh, so now that I've got the sounds here, I'm going to go over to events on the top tab here And then I'm just going to hit on the default work unit new child event One is going to be called tree Russell And the other one is going to be My hazard Oh boy, I can't spell today. Okay, perfect. So now I'm just going to click on the actual event here On this area what I'm going to do is just go to audio and just drag just like that onto there. So once again, just go to events, click on your event. It's gonna be empty here. And I'm gonna drag the tree rustle onto there. Perfect, cool. And so now you can also test it out. You can tell that you've got your sounds going. Okay, perfect. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is go over to your sound banks tab. Okay, so now over here, all that we need to do is, uh, if you haven't created a new sound bank, you wanna go to new, Type in your name for the sound bank, hit OK. Um, you are going to want to select this, this little checkbox here, Windows and English. Uh, sometimes it might have Mac here too, depending on what you want to do. Just select that and uh, then drag in your sounds. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to, I already have a sound bank, so I'm just going to get rid of this. Click over here on sound banks and just do that. Okay, cool. So we're back into here. Uh, I'm going to go to my events and I'm going to select the ones that I want to drag in. Just click and drag it into this area here. Okay, so now that I have it in here, all I'm gonna hit is just generate all. I'm gonna close that out and then do project and save. Okay, cool, so that's pretty much it on the wise end. Let's go over to Unreal and I'll show you how to get these sounds in there. So the first thing you wanna do when you come into your Unreal project is you wanna add uh, a sound bank. If you need to do that, just go here to uh, audio kinetic and type in audio kinetic bank it'll pop this in you name it whatever you want that's going to be the same name for the wise sound bank that you created earlier uh, the next thing you want to do is go over to window go to wise picker go to event default work unit find the events that you want to drag in click and drag simple as that uh, an easy way to for if you're doing similar sound banks, if these are going to the same sound bank, you can just hit uh, shift or control and then select both of them and then hit edit and then go here and select that. And that'll just save you a bit of time so you don't have to click and do it for both. Okay, cool. So the last thing you want to do is just hit uh, build and generate sound data. So I do that and it will say cooking why sound data completed and it'll ask you if you want to import some changes just say yes after you're done that the next thing you want to do is sort of add your box triggers so in order to do that over in the left tab here you just can drag and put some in, in here like that I've already placed some for the trees and stuff like that I've got here so I'm not gonna do it for these specific trees but I'll just show you how it sort of works here okay 
So now with this part here, if this is locked, it will adjust all the different axes on at the same time, same values, I guess. And so you can see it's all doing at the same time. If you want to do it individually, for example, I want to make it taller, I'll go over here to the Z axis and I can sort of just do that. And I'll make sure it's unclicked and then you can click it again and then you can adjust it like so. Okay. Now, of course, once you've created your thing, you want to go into blueprint add script. I'm not going to do that for this one because it is, well, I'm not going to be using this box specifically, but I'll just be using another one. Okay. So it's going to be for this tree. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to hit edit blueprint, open blueprint editor. Okay, so now the first thing you wanna do is drag off of this guy and you wanna type in branch. Okay, so what a branch basically does is it's a sort of conditional statement. So it says if um, this sort of condition is met, then it will do this. If it's true, it will do this. If it's false, then it will do that. So in this scenario, if it's true, so there is um, there's an actor that is overlapping with um, you know whatever my trigger box. Then if it's true, then it's gonna I want it to post an event, just like this. Okay. And so the simple thing here is you're gonna drag off of actor, type in self like that, and then in the AK event, I'm just gonna select the tree Russell one, you know that I selected. But it could be anything for you. And then for the last part here. We're gonna drag off of other actor and we're gonna type in actor has tag, like that, there we go. Okay, and then we're gonna drag this return value into the condition here of the branch, like that. And now this the last part to get everything working is we need to set a tag. All right, so in order to set a tag, we need to go back to our sort of you know main area and we need to go to edit in the top part here, go to project settings, Go to gameplay tags. Looks like I already was playing around with it a little bit. <laughs> okay, so under here, gameplay tag list, we're gonna go add new gameplay tag. We'll type in, we'll call it player. It could be for enemies, it can be, you know, for whatever you want. Um, the comment, don't worry about that. And then we're just gonna hit add new tag. And you know that, it just pops up. Cool. So that's pretty much it. All we have to do to set up a tag for, you know, in game. Um, but we need to make sure that um, whatever actor it is, is um, connected to that tag. So for example, for me, uh, in this game, the player is going to be you know, the first person player. And so I need to make sure I reference that properly. So depending if it's a different, if it's a third person, it's going to be a third person BP. If it's a first person, it's going to be a first person BP. So I'm just going to go into here, my blueprints. Yours might look a little different. This is some stuff that was done in the game. Don't worry too much about this. The one thing you want to make sure you're looking for is that you are in class defaults. And what you want to do is go into here where it says actor. You're going to see tags. Just click this plus icon. You're going to type in the name of the tag that you created, player, which was in the project settings. And then hit compile and save. And so now that's set. So now your your player now has the tag player attached to that. So now we just simply go back into our blueprint here. So for the whatever trigger box you created, and then just simply type in player like that. And then hit compile, save, go back. And now everything should work properly. Cross your fingers. All right, so we're gonna try it out. Cool, so now it makes a bit of a sound. I will say it's not the perfect um, situation because say for example, I, well, I mean, I can't stay here indefinitely, but you will notice because it's a one shot sound, it will go away. So, I mean, it's not a perfect system, but it's something to get you going. And I hope this is sort of helpful in this regard. So yeah, you can get it to do um, a one shot. If you're doing a loop, just keep in mind that's gonna play the loop over and over and over again. So just keep that in mind. So this works pretty well with this type of sort of thing. Um, but the other one I wanted to show you is if, for example, you wanted to destroy itself right after. Uh, and it's a very, very simple thing to do. Um, again, I've already created a sort of trigger box here. 
Uh, and so in the purposes of the game that I did, I wanted to just be some dialogue that played once when you start the game. So I set it so that the player actually starts here uh, in, in the beginning of the game and they walk out into this area and then I wanted this dialogue to play. Uh, but then I didn't want the situation where they go back and it plays the same dialogue over again. So in order to do that, all you need to do is just do this one small change. So we'll just go into the blueprint editor. Oh, actually it looks like I didn't even create it. So it's very, very simple. It's actually much the same. The only thing that I have to do that's going to be different is this. Just simply destroy actor like so. And let me just quickly just finish off this last little bit. It's actually exactly the same as the one we did before. So now that I've got all that stuff set up, I need to set the asset. So this is what I put in the hazard for just to show you guys. All right, so I'm just gonna hit compile and save. So now that I've done that, I'm just gonna hit, I'm gonna go back into the map and uh, I'm gonna go into that trigger box. Can you hear it just played that sound and now I can't get it to trigger it because now it just destroyed itself which is great uh, so hopefully that is helpful uh, that is pretty much it in terms of the trigger boxes and you know the destroying itself there are most likely other things that you can do um, you can also get them to set states and stuff like that with music and I will go into that a little bit more actually probably in my next couple of videos when I do music specifically. But that's pretty much it for getting um, the tags and the trigger boxes to play some sounds. Um, yeah, you know, if you've got some other ideas for um, getting some trigger boxes to play different sounds and stuff like that or getting it to work differently, I'd love to hear a comment or something like that in the comment section below of your, your idea and what you ended up doing. Uh, but this is the basic way that I've gotten it to work. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a like and uh, consider subscribing. Again, because there's going to be more videos covering this sort of topic as well as some other composition related stuff in the future too. Um, all right, that's pretty much it. Have a great day. Bye.